Acute heart failure. Acute heart failure is defined as the rapid onset of symptoms or signs due to abnormal cardiac function. The causes of acute heart failure are listed in Table 1.6, the most common being coronary artery disease. The half of physiological changes associated with acute heart failure are reduced cardiac output with poor tissue perfusion and increased pulmonary capillary wedge. Pressure a surrogate marker of increased left atrial. Pressure from reduced forward blood flow. In patients. Without pre-existing chronic heart failure, the JVP may not. Be elevated, acute left ventricular failure, the heart size. Is normal, cardiomegaly is a chronic process, and a Sudden increased back pressure leads to severe pulmonary. Edema causes of acute heart failure, acute decompensation of existing heart failure. Acute coronary syndromes. Acute heart valve disease. Arrhythmia. Hypertensive crises. Myocarditis. Cardiac tamponade. High output cardiac failure. Reduced organ perfusion from acute heart failure results in a multisystem disorder as detailed below acute heart failure can result in a number of clinical presentations. Acute decompensated heart failure is associated with mild dyspnea without evidence of pulmonary edema or cardiogenic shock patients with pulmonary edema as confirmed by Chest X-ray, usually present with severe dyspnea and on. Examination may be cyanosed with diffuse pulmonary. Crepitations. Patients with cardiogenic shock usually have hypotension and a low urine output associated with a pulse rate of more than 60 BPM. Less common manifestations of acute heart failure include hypertensive acute heart failure symptoms and Signs of heart failure with elevated blood pressure and pulmonary edema and high output heart failure full blood count. Anemia is associated with reduced oxygen carriage and may be a precipitating cause. Urea and electrolytes. Reduced organ perfusion can lead to renal impairment. Liver profile. Reduced organ perfusion can lead to a deranged liver. Profile. Serum cardiac markers. Elevated troponin levels would suggest myocardial. Infarction as the underlying cause for acute heart. Failure. Arterial blood gases. An estimation of PO2 is useful to guide management. Patients with pulmonary edema may have type I respiratory failure, a low PO2 and low PCO2. Electrocardiogram. An ECG is useful to screen for myocardial ischemia. And arrhythmia chest X ray. A plain chest film will reveal pulmonary edema in patients with severe heart failure. Echocardiogram. A transthoracic echocardiogram is an essential investigation to assess ventricular function, heart valve disease. Pericardial disease and mechanical complications of myocardial infarction oxygen. Maintaining oxygen saturations above 95% is important to improve tissue oxygenation and reduce pulmonary artery pressure, improve right ventricular forward flow. If adequate oxygenation cannot be achieved by supplementary oxygen, continuous positive airway pressure. A CPAP can be employed. With severe heart failure, intubation and ventilation may be required. Monitoring of oxygen levels can be undertaken by peripheral saturations or by repeated measurements from an indwelling arterial line. Morphine. Morphine is indicated in the early stages to induce vasodilatation and alleviate symptoms of dyspnea. Nitrates. Intravenous nitrates are administered to relieve pulmonary 
congestion and improve coronary flow. However, tolerance to treatment usually develops after 24 hours. Identify and address any precipitating cause. Any precipitating cause, such as myocardial infarction, or hyphmia or infection should be addressed. Drugs that are associated with hypotension ACE inhibitors, beta blockers should be stopped in the presence of acute heart failure hemodynamic measurements, measurements of cardiac output and other hemodynamic indices, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure can be obtained with a pulmonary artery flotation catheter. A swan gans and are usually reserved for patients with severe heart failure requiring inotropic support diuretics. Loop diuretics are administered to patients with acute heart failure and fluid overload. Volume status is usually assessed using central venous or pulmonary capillary. Wedge pressure. More rapid removal of fluid can be undertaken using hemofiltration, inotropic agents. Inotropic agents may be required to augment cardiac output, usually pulmonary artery flotation catheter. Measurements of cardiac output, pulmonary capillary. Wedge pressure and systemic vascular resistance are performed to guide selection of an appropriate inotropic agent. Adrenaline is a commonly used inotropic agent. And phosphodiesterase inhibitors inoximone are also a useful alternative when increased cardiac output is required in addition to lowering of the systemic vascular resistance setting of temporary assistance for acute cardiac failure in anticipation of full recovery in conditions such as acute myocarditis bridge to recovery or as a holding measure prior to heart transplantation, bridge to transplantation. More recently, the scope for ventricular assist devices has been extended to prolong the quality of life in end stage. Heart failure, destination therapy, surgical management. Definitive surgical management is directed to correcting any underlying cause such as acute heart valve regurgitation correcting any mechanical complication of myocardial infarction and relief of cardiac tamponade. Mechanical. Circulatory assistance can be provided whilst the underlying cause is being addressed or if the underlying cause is reversible or whilst awaiting definitive treatment, for example. Heart transplantation. Intraaortic balloon pump support. The intra-aortic balloon is a 25 to 50 ml elongated balloon, 17 to 27 cm, that is designed to rest in the aorta, distal to the subclavian artery and proximal to the renal arteries. FAG 1.11. It is introduced percutaneously via the femoral artery and controlled by timed helium inflation during diastole and deflation during systole. The effect of the balloon is to increase aortic pressure during diastole, improving coronary perfusion and decrease aortic pressure during systole, reducing workload and myocardial oxygen consumption. The indications of intra-aortic balloon usage are temporary cardiac support during acute ventricular failure cardiogenic shock or mechanical complications of myocardial infarction, P28, in view of the favorable effects on coronary perfusion, it is also used in refractory, unstable, angina and intractable ischemic ventricular arrhythmia. Contraindications are aortic regurgitation, aortic aneurysm and severe aortoiliac disease. Complications of usage include lower limb ischemia, aortic dissection and hemolysis ventricular assist devices. Ventricular assist devices are designed to provide a longer period of cardiac support and require surgical implantation. 
with the use of cardiopulmonary bypass. Ventricular assist. Devices can augment or take over the role of the heart by diverting the flow of blood from the ventricles into the assist device and back into the aorta or pulmonary artery. For right ventricular assist devices, they can be implanted on the left, right, or both sides of the heart. A multitude of devices are currently employed and differ with respect to construction from pulsatile, pump-assisted, to continuous flow, axial, and centrifugal flow pumps. Candidate selection is paramount as this is currently a very expensive treatment option. It is usually used in the setting of temporary assistance for acute cardiac failure in anticipation of full recovery in conditions such as acute myocarditis bridge to recovery or as a holding measure prior to heart transplantation bridge to transplantation. More recently, the scope for ventricular assist devices has been extended to prolong the quality of life in end-stage heart failure destination therapy.